Hey there, thank you so much for joining us on this Tuesday. It's now 1 p.m. in the East and 10 a.m. out West. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Welcome to Scripps News Live. We begin this hour with developing news out of Fulton County, Georgia, where former President Trump has been indicted on criminal charges now for the fourth time. This time for his attempt to overturn Georgia's election results. Trump claiming that he is a victim of a witch hunt, but the Fulton County DA is calling it a criminal enterprise. Trump is charged alongside 18 of his allies, including former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows and Trump's former personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani. We have live team coverage for you on all of the developments in Georgia. National political correspondent Abajoy Burnett outside of the Fulton County Courthouse. She has more on the indictment. Also, congressional correspondent Nathaniel Reed is live in Washington. He has a closer look at political reaction. Let's go and begin right here in Atlanta with Abajoy Burnett, who's standing outside of the Fulton County Courthouse. So, Abajoy, you've read through this 98-page indictment. Um, break it all down for us. What exactly does it say? Hi, Veronica. Well, there are 19 people who are named in this indictment, more than 40 charges, as you mentioned. The person on the top is the former president, Donald Trump. And I want to give you an idea of some of the allegations against the former president in this 98-page indictment. The Fulton County District Attorney, she's alleging that he took steps in order to subvert the will of the people, the voters here in Georgia, and then well beyond the border. So let's take a deeper look here. One of the things that the Fulton County District Attorney is alleging is that on December 5th, 2020, shortly after the general election, the former president allegedly made a phone call to the governor here in the state asking him to call for a special session, a special legislative session. And in this session, the steps would be taken to move forward those fake electors. So that's one allegation against the former president. We're also hearing, according to this indictment, that he had people who were working with him. We reached out to other people here in the state of Georgia to make those same efforts. And one thing that was really enlightening to me when I read through this, there was an apparent email draft where people who were surrounding the former president would send out this email draft to other states beyond the borders of Georgia in order to give, give them directions on what steps should be taken to advance fake electors to benefit the former president instead of Joe Biden. So this is something that was really deep inside of this indictment, Veronica, and something that so many people have been watching and talking about today. I wanted to talk specifically, Abajoy, about Rudy Giuliani. We're getting more insight right now about the allegations against him. What more can you tell us? Well, even though there were 19 people who were named here, the storyline surrounding Rudy Giuliani is something that we all became familiar with, and that's because he's such a visible person. He flew down here to Georgia in December of 2020 to try to make an argument to Georgia elected officials. And this is something that was broadcasted over social media because we were in the middle of the pandemic. Many of those proceedings were being uh, live casted. And so we have video of Rudy Giuliani trying to make his case to elected officials here in Georgia that there was ballot fraud. This is something that we've become so familiar with because those election workers, they eventually went to Capitol Hill to testify. But one more thing that I didn't know that I found out after reading this indictment, that there were additional steps that they were trying to take. If the efforts here in Georgia failed, they wanted to slow down the certification process up in Washington, D.C. on January 6th. They had contingency plans for that, according to the indictment. But Rudy Giuliani, he's now speaking out about this. He issued a statement, and I want to read for you a portion of this statement. He said, this is an affront to American democracy and does permanent harm to our justice system. It's just the next chapter in a book of lies with the purpose of framing, framing President Donald Trump and anyone willing to take on the ruling regime. This is what he's saying after he has been charged in this indictment alongside the former president and more than a dozen other people. But Fannie Willis, the, the district attorney here in Georgia, she has been very vocal. She had a late night press conference and here's a little bit about what she had to say last night. Specifically, the participants in association took various actions in Georgia and elsewhere to block the counting of the votes of the presidential electors who were certified as the winners of Georgia's 2020 general election. 
This is the former president's second indictment in less than a week. Remember, there's the January 6th indictment that came down last week. As for everyone in this particular case, they have until next week, Friday, August 25th, to make their initial appearance here in this Fulton County Courthouse. That really is going to be a very complex matter because there are so many people who've been named in this. There are also 30 unnamed co-conspirators here. I spoke with an attorney here in Georgia who's been following this case quite closely, Veronica, and he said it's very likely that all of those people are cooperating witnesses. All right, Abajoy Burnett live outside the Fulton County Courthouse. Abajoy, thank you so much. So former President Trump took little time turning to social media to express his opinions about his fourth indictment. The former president called this indictment another part of the, quote, witch hunt against him in his presidential campaign. Several Republican allies also swiftly came to his defense once the indictment was handed down. Congressional correspondent Nathana Reed joining us now live from Washington. So, Nate, what are we hearing right now from Republicans in Congress about Trump's latest indictment? Well, the loudest voices so far are from Republicans in the House of Representatives, the Republican majority there. We haven't heard as much from Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, who's been somewhat loath to comment on a number of these indictments. But what we're hearing from Republicans in the House of Representatives is actually quite similar to what we've heard for the previous indictments. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy putting out a statement on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, uh, shortly before midnight saying, in part, Biden has weaponized government against his leading political opponent to in interfere in the 2024 election, accusing Fonnie Willis, the DA in Georgia, of following Biden's league lead by attacking President Trump and using it to fundraise for her political career. Jim Jordan, the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, saying, quote, uh, that the indictment was just plain wrong and it was a political attack of the Democrats witch hunt against President Trump and that the former president did nothing wrong. That's largely in line with what we've seen from Republicans in the House of Representatives. Democrats, meanwhile, taking a more measured tone, saying that this indictment should be allowed to play out without political intervention in court. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and the House Minority Leader uh, Hakeem Jeffries saying in a joint statement, much like the last one from the most recent indictment, quote, the fourth indictment of Donald Trump, just like the three which came before it, portrays a repeated pattern of criminal activity by the former president. They continue by saying that the actions taken by the Fulton County District Attorney, along with other state and federal prosecutors, reaffirms the shared belief that in America, no one, not even the president, is above the law. They also urge that Mr. Trump and his supporters and his critics allow the legal process to proceed without outside interference. So, Veronica, in many ways, what we're seeing kind of mirrors what we've seen from previous indictments at the same time, given that this one is a state indictment, a bit of a different narrative there. Republicans saying in the previous uh, federal indictments that President Biden was weaponizing the Justice Department against former President Trump. In this case, it's not a uh, indictment originating from the Justice Department. It's from the Fulton County District Attorney. That's right, Nate. And Georgia Republicans are at the heart of this indictment. In fact, we were watching yesterday as former Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan was leaving the courthouse. He'd been called on to testify by the grand jury. What is happening with Georgia Republicans right now, Nate? Are they standing by Trump now that the indictment has been handed down? Well, it's interesting. J Jeff Duncan is someone who's been somewhat outspoken against former President Trump, saying that he doesn't believe what the president tried to do in the state was legal. That being said, for Republicans in Georgia who are still in power, like Governor Brian Kemp, they're taking a fairly harsh line against the former president, uh, completely unlike what we've seen from Republicans on Capitol Hill. In a statement uh, released just a couple of moments ago on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, Brian Kemp saying that the 2020 election in Georgia was not stolen for three years. Now, anyone with evidence of fraud has failed to come forward under oath and prove anything in the court of law. Also reaffirming that he believes the elections in Georgia are secure, accessible, and fair, and he will continue to do that as long as he's governor. He also concludes by saying that the future of the country is at state. Similar statement from Brad Raffensperger, the Georgia Secretary of State, who was the subject of that call from former President Trump to try and get him to change some of the vote totals in that state uh, prior to the election. He said in a brief statement, the most basic principles of a strong democracy are accountability and respect for the Constitution and rule of law. You either have it or you don't. So a very different line from Georgia Republicans who are still in power in the state of Georgia than what we've seen from Republicans in the House of Representatives nationally. All right, Nathana Reed, live in Washington. Nate, thank you so much. And our coverage of former President Trump's historic fourth indictment will continue right here. 
throughout Scripps News Live. We're going to take an in-depth look at what comes next for the former president. That's straight ahead at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. In the meantime, here's what's next on Scripps News Live, the new reality for people living in Maui. Everything's ash. Our house, our, my business, everything's gone. We're going to take a closer look at where recovery efforts stand after those devastating and deadly wildfires. Also, don't forget, you can always count on Scripps News for all of your news throughout the primetime hours, beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern. Behind the nightmares of war hide simple motivations. An immediate concern is theft of grain. Scripps News and our partners at Bellingcat follow the costs and profits of the war in Ukraine, tracking the hidden network of Russian cargo ships, smuggling precious resources from occupied lands. Scripps News and Bellingcat present Russia's Ghost Fleet, Sunday night at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. Hi, I'm Kirk Kaiser, and did you know the average funeral costs around $10,000? And if you don't have enough insurance to cover funeral costs, credit card debt, and other expenses, your family is going to get stuck with the bill. Don't let that happen. Call right now. And if you're over 50, you can get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance, and your acceptance is guaranteed. That's right. If you're over 50, you can't be turned down for this insurance, regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. Your rate will never go up. Your coverage will never go down. And rates start as low as $5 a week. Your coverage begins as soon as your application is received. Don't wait until it's too late. Just call 800-760-7793. Coverage is guaranteed regardless of your health and cannot be canceled without your approval. Don't leave your family with a huge bill for your funeral. With one fast and easy call, get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance to help cover funeral expenses and credit card debt, and maybe even leave something for your kids and your grandkids. Remember, if you're over 50, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's no medical exam and no health questions. Best of all, your rates start as low as $5 a week and your rate will never increase. Nothing is more important than family. So don't leave them with a lot of bills to pay when you're gone. Don't leave your family with a lot of bills to pay for your funeral. Call right now. Acceptance is guaranteed. Call right now. Call now. Call 800-760-7793. That's 800-760-7793. When a cyber thief transfers the title of your home out of your name, it's a race against time to stop the theft of your hard-earned equity. Many people don't know this has happened until long after it's done. You as the homeowner think you still own a house. Three months later, you start getting foreclosure notices and you realize you've got four mortgages on your house that you didn't even know existed. So when's the last time you checked on the title to your home? Find out if you're already a victim at HomeTitleLock.com. Hi, I'm Sophia, founder of Pair Eyewear. The only glasses you can change, like you change your clothes. Glasses are an extension of your personality, and we're here to celebrate each and every version of you. Discover your next pair at PairEyewear.com. We need some help. I know. I'm going to CashNetUSA.com, and if approved, we can have the money in our account as soon as the same business day. Go to CashNetUSA.com to apply for the money you need. Well, today, Hawaiian officials are expected to release some of the names of the 99 people killed in the Maui wildfires. Authorities are still working to identify dozens of bodies as search and rescue efforts continue. As of right now, more than 1,000 people are reportedly missing or unaccounted for. Hawaii's governor says the search will take time and asks for space to do it properly. We have to respect the dead, and uh, we... We have already seen that if people go into ground zero too soon, uh, our, our responders, our FEMA folks, will not be able to do the job that they are there to do, which is to find out whether we've lost any of our loved ones. Crews are using cadaver dogs to help with the search. And the people of Maui are leaning on each other to rebuild. 
Scripps News national correspondent Dan Grossman was on board a boat where volunteers distributed much needed supplies. Ready? Here go. A sense of relief will come to Maui, but this day was not that day. Volunteers who lined the Lanikai 2 knew yet another grueling day of getting supplies to those who needed them most stood ahead of them. Now's a good time to get a belly full of water. You're going to be on hot sand midday Kanapali unloading for an hour straight. Efforts like this have been going on for nearly a week. First, survival items like clothes and water were needed in Lahaina. Now, more long-term things like gas and propane are making their way to the town that has lost so much. All right, perfect. We've got more people on the way, too. And as friends and strangers prepared for what laid ahead, they knew this supply drop was not like the rest. This is one of the many boats locals have relied on to get much-needed supplies to those in line. If you take a look, there is gas, there is diesel, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of water bottles, and there is propane to be able to cook much of the food that has been graciously given to those in need. Now, the people who have been loading and unloading this are not just volunteers who are giving their free time. They are people who need these supplies as much as anyone else. Everything's ash. Our house, our, my business, everything's gone. On board the Lani Kai was Cindy Tatum, one of the several volunteers who felt this trip was monumental. She escaped the flames with her boyfriend. This was the first time she was able to see the remains of her home since they had been extinguished. Oh my God. Oh my God. Those were the only three words Cindy could muster. Her mind wasn't centered on what she couldn't change. Instead, it was focused on what she could. It's the only thing I'm focused on, actually. I, I'm finding that out, you know? I haven't slept. I'm exhausted. I can't sleep at night because I'm just like, thinking of ways to get up here and do something. That time to do something came soon enough. We got 12 more cylinders. We got that extra hand. First, the thousands of dollars worth of supplies were transferred from one boat to the next. Some people don't have anything to cook with. Grills are the way. That is it. Then they were unloaded to Lahaina as friends and family were able to embrace for the first time since the fire roared through. It was a time when Kirsten Mullenberg could reflect on what it means to live here. I think it just proves that like how resourceful and incredible these islands are in the sense of community that we all have. Like, of course, it's a tragedy and we're all devastated by it, but like the volunteers themselves are you know, happy to be here and happy to be helping. Yes. In Hawaiian, Ohana means family. I'm really sweaty. I'm not going to hug no, you. No, no way. Me too. <laughs> and in the span of just four hours, it was clear a mix of friends and strangers were able to become that through common purpose. Dan Grossman, Scripps News, Maui. People living in Maui desperately need lots of help and money to piece their lives back together again. Here at Scripps News, we are supporting relief efforts through the Scripps Maui Wildfire Relief Campaign. Feel free to scan the QR code on your screen to donate to relief efforts. Any amount will help make a difference for the people of Maui. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, President Biden taking his celebration on the road. We're going to show you what he's up to in Milwaukee this afternoon. And we would like to hear from you. Give us a call on our Scripps News Viewer Hotline toll free. That number is on your screen. It's 1 833 4 Scripps. Feel free to share your comments and your story ideas. This is an important message for the millions of Medicare recipients covered under your state's Medicaid. Medicare and Medicaid give you some benefits, but there are Medicare Advantage plans available with even more benefits and savings. Call the number on your screen and get a free Medicare benefits review to see if you qualify. A licensed insurance agent is standing by to take your call. Just call 800-981-2945 now. Some Medicare Advantage plans may include dental, vision, and hearing coverage, $0 copays for prescription drugs, and an annual allowance to spend on groceries, rent, and utilities for those who qualify. Plus, some plans may include lots of doctors and hospitals all in-network. You don't get these benefits automatically. Call now and get a free, no-obligation benefits review. 
Just call 800-981-2945 now. That's 800-981-2945. Plus, certain beneficiaries may qualify based on income verification to enroll in their state-based Medicare savings program. That can add up to $164 back to their Social Security check every month. Call the number on your screen to see if you qualify for this state-based program. A licensed insurance agent is standing by to take your call. Just call 800-981-2945 now. Medicare and Medicaid give you some benefits, but there are Medicare Advantage plans available with even more benefits and savings. Plus, some plans may include lots of doctors and hospitals all in-network. Plans may include dental, vision, and hearing coverage, $0 copays for prescription drugs, and an annual allowance to spend on groceries, rent, and utilities for those who qualify. Plus, you may be eligible for a plan with free transportation. Remember, you don't get these benefits automatically. Call now and get a free, no-obligation benefits review. Just call 800-981-2945 now. That's 800-981-2945. Tens of thousands of customers wrote about Carvana being easy in their five-star reviews, including Eric. The whole process was really simple and easy, and this is my third time selling to Carvana. So I can practically do it from memory now. You just enter your license plate or your VIN, answer a few questions, boom, you get a real offer. True story. Still shocking how easy it was to sell my car to Carvana. Sell your car to Carvana today. During my time reporting from the front lines in Ukraine, I witnessed the extraordinary spirit of everyday people. As a mother, I have to show the good example. Putting their lives on the line to defend their home. War is not the task of one person. Our motto is always first, always forward. No surrender. Ukraine's unsung heroes. Wednesday night at 10, 9 central, only on Scripps News. One minutes after the hour, lots of red on the board halfway through this trading day. The Dow Jones dropping nearly 300 points. It's down right now about 276 points. The S&P is down 36 and the Nasdaq is down about 90 points. E economic data out of China right now is putting a drag on the U.S. markets. We're going to keep an eye on it for you. Well, right now, President Biden is in Milwaukee, where he is planning to tout Bidenomics. It's just one of many stops that he is making to celebrate the one-year anniversary of the Inflation Reduction Act. During his time in Milwaukee, the president will also tour Ingatim, which is a manufacturing facility that specializes in electric power converters. And this is where he's going to be delivering his remarks in the next hour. White House correspondent Haley Bull has been following the president's trip for us from Washington. She joins us now with the details on this. So, Haley, you have the president's agenda. What more can we expect from him today? Hey, good afternoon, Veronica. Well, we expect President Biden to highlight his economic agenda as he looks to tomorrow's one-year anniversary of the Inflation Reduction Act. The White House credits that climate legislation with creating more manufacturing and union jobs as it pursues a clean energy transition, as well as helping to lower some of the everyday costs, including health care costs. Now, in Wisconsin, as you mentioned, Biden is expected to visit a company that manufactures wind turbine generators who expects orders to double next year as a result of the legislation and will start making electric vehicle charging stations. And it's an example of the kind of private sector investments that the White House credits with the Inflation Reduction Act. The White House says that the legislation has led to more than $110 billion in private sector clean energy and manufacturing. But Biden has admitted uh, he wished he didn't call it the Inflation Reduction Act at a recent campaign reception. Biden said it had less to do with reducing inflation than, quote, providing for alternatives that generate economic growth. Now, while Biden and administration officials have pressed their messaging on this across the country, polling shows that there still may be a disconnect with Americans at home. For example, a recent Washington Post and University of Maryland poll found that the majority of respondents had limited awareness about the Inflation Reduction Act and only about four in 10 supported it. Now, when they were pressed further about the specifics, for example, the tax credits, uh, that number went up. Now, the White House has placed 
more optimism as the legislation continues to be implemented going forward. Listen. I think that it, there's a lag effect for people feeling it and recognizing it. And I think we're starting to see that story come across. Um, and then, you know, I think we just have to make it real and tell the story because historic legislation is fantastic, but it's conceptual. Here, this is changing people's lives, and that's why we need to be on the ground and be comfortable being repetitive about how this is making people's lives better. And this continues the effort we have seen from the president and other administration leaders for the past several months as they've traveled across the country uh, to highlight the impact of this legislation and others like the Chips and Science Act and the Infrastructure Law. But this week specifically, when we look at the Inflation Reduction Act, other administration leaders are also crisscrossing the country, giving uh, remarks, attending groundbreakings, touring facilities as part of that, including the vice president this afternoon as well, Veronica. All right. So he's saying that he doesn't really like IRA or the Inflation Reduction Act, or at least its name. I wonder how he's feeling about Bidenomics. Did he say anything about that? Well, we certainly expect to hear more about Bidenomics this afternoon. Uh, but when you look at the president's past remarks, uh, Bidenomics, which is the term that the White House has leaned into to describe uh, the president's economic agenda that focuses on the middle class more so than trickle down uh, economics, he's made the argument that it's working and he points to things uh, like job growth, lower unemployment, and the inflation rate continuing to come down. The White House taking credit for that through uh, its policies. So it's something we have heard repeatedly from the president, and I think it's fair to say uh, we can hear, likely hear, uh, this afternoon as well. Yeah, and his name is in the title, so I'm sure he likes it a bit better than the Inflation Protection Act title. <laughs> All right. Haley Potentially. All right, Haley, thank you so much. So the Biden administration has started clearing student debt for more than 200,000 people. It's all part of the administration's effort to address challenges that borrowers face under income-driven repayment plans. Emails have been going out to nearly 600,000 additional people who qualify for forgiveness. The administration says everyone eligible will be notified in the coming weeks. I'm Veronica De La Cruz. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. Don't forget, you can always check us out online. We're at scriptsnews.com. And if you're staying with us right now, we have much more news headed your way right here on Scripps News Live. Coming up next, farms in coastal communities are suffering from climate change. We're going to show you how rising sea levels have been threatening the future of coastal agriculture. That's next. Attention anyone new to Medicare moving or losing coverage for any reason. You may qualify for a Medicare special enrollment period. Call now to see if you're eligible to enroll in a Medicare Part C plan with extra benefits. Did you know Medicare Part C is commonly called Medicare Advantage? If you qualify for an SEP, call now because there may be plans with extra benefits available that are not covered under Medicare Parts A and B. There are people who qualify for special enrollment but don't have a Medicare Advantage Part C plan which covers everything in Part A and Part B plus extra benefits not covered by original Medicare. Here's the good news. If you qualify, you can call now. We will check to see if there's a Medicare Advantage Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. Call now to speak with a licensed insurance agent to see if you are eligible to enroll in a 2023 Medicare Advantage plan with extra benefits like dental coverage or savings on prescription medications. You don't get these extra benefits automatically, so call now for your free 2023 no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Just call 800-769-1530. 800-769-1530. Attention anyone new to Medicare moving or losing coverage for any reason. You may qualify for a Medicare special enrollment period. Call now to see if you're eligible to enroll in a Medicare Part C plan with extra benefits. Did you know Medicare Part C is commonly called Medicare Advantage? If you qualify for an SEP, call now because there may be plans with extra benefits available that are not covered under Medicare Parts A and B. There are people who qualify for special enrollment but don't have a Medicare Advantage Part C plan which covers everything in Part A and Part B plus extra benefits not covered by original Medicare. 
Medicare. Here's the good news. If you qualify, you can call now. We will check to see if there's a Medicare Advantage Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. Call now to speak with a licensed insurance agent to see if you are eligible to enroll in a 2023 Medicare Advantage plan with extra benefits like dental coverage or savings on prescription medications. You don't get these extra benefits automatically, so call now for your free 2023 no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Just call 800-769-1530. 800-769-1530. Hey there, welcome to Scripps News Live. Great to see you today. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Let's get you caught up right now in the day's top stories. More than a thousand people missing after the deadly Maui wildfire that killed at least 99 people. Hawaii's governor, Josh Green, said hurricane force winds spread the flames a mile a minute, and he described the destruction as, quote, incredible. Rescue teams have been searching through the charred rubble of what was once the historic town of Lahaina. It is the deadliest U.S. wildfire in a century. The mother of a six-year-old boy who shot his teacher in a Virginia classroom pleading guilty to felony child neglect this morning. Prosecutors dropped a reckless storage of a firearm charge. Investigators say the child put Deja Taylor's gun in his backpack and then used it to shoot teacher Abby's Werner in the chest and arm. She's filed a $40 million lawsuit accusing the school system of gross negligence. Hunter Biden's lead criminal defense attorney asking a federal judge to remove him from the case today. Christopher Clark says it's because he could be called as a witness. Hunter Biden's lawyers say the Justice Department backed out of a plea deal, which would have allowed him to avoid prosecution on a gun charge in exchange for guilty pleas on two tax charges. It is unprecedented for a former U.S. president to be indicted, and now it's happened to Donald Trump four times. He's charged under Georgia's Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organization Act, or RICO law. It was originally originally created to target organized crime groups. Trump and 18 others accused of creating a criminal enterprise to reverse the results of the 2020 election in Georgia. Trump is denying all charges. Paul Pelletier joins us now. He's a former Department of Justice prosecutor and a current trial lawyer in Washington. Paul, great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Um, Let's go and begin with this indictment. 98 pages, 41 counts, 19 defendants total, and then there are about 30 unnamed co-conspirators. What is your reaction? Well, well, good, good afternoon, Veronica. My reaction is probably what everyone's reaction is. That's a lot to chew off of. If you've ever... Um, scene of a trial. Um, you have the defendant sitting on one side and the government sitting on the other side. Most courtrooms can't handle 19 defendants. That's a lot of people. So I anticipate that number one, this trial is going to take a long time. Number two, that it probably is going to be the last of his four tri- criminal trials to go to trial. And number three, that the, ju- that the court or the judge is probably going to break it up into much smaller digestible pieces. But this indictment is something that the president, the former president Trump, is not going to be able to avoid because it's in a state court and he no pardon or anything like that can get him out of it. So it's it's a very powerful charging document. I wanted to ask you specifically about these 19 defendants, because like you were just saying, it is a lot. It's a lot to wrap your head around. There are a lot of people that are involved. And Fonnie Willis has said that she wants to try all 19 defendants together. How do you make that happen? And then how do you speak to the court calendar with four different trials now taking place at the same time? Well, first of all, you can. I've had trials with as much as 13 uh, defendant sitting there, but it, you need big courtrooms, you need very conscientious jurors, and the problem with that is, is the trials end up taking an extraordinarily long time. The last trial I had that had 12 defendants took almost six months to trial, to go to trial and to try, and so I, I think that, um, that that it may be impossible to do so. I think that in the, in the long run, you'll probably have some plea agreements, some people will cooperate, but I don't think judges like to try that many people because it's going to take a long time to try it. And because of that, the trial will, like I said earlier, will probably be scheduled at the end of his federal trials and, pro- and probably after his Manhattan trial. So it seems to me that this trial is going to be set way off in the future, well after the presidential election. 
I wanted to also ask you a little bit more about the DA's strategy here because though she's named 19 defendants in this indictment, there were 30 unnamed co-conspirators. What do you have to say about her strategy here? Well, I mean, obviously you can't name 49 people in an indictment. That's just, that's way too much. And at the end of the day, sometimes these co-conspirators, when, when they're listed as unindicted co-conspirators, sometimes that's because they're cooperating. And so I would imagine that there's a large portion of that 30 that are cooperating with their investigation. So it suggests that there's going to be a lot of people in the state of Georgia who will be cooperating as, who will be testifying as cooperating witnesses in that case. That's what that suggests to me. And this is all happening, Paul, while Trump is running for president again. Right now, he is a front runner for the Republican nomination. So if he is convicted, what is the legality of his candidacy? And will he be able to serve as president of the United States? Well, um, sir, so I, like I said earlier, I don't believe this case is going to go to trial before the election. But if he's elected, there's nothing he can do about this trial because neither the governor of Georgia nor the president can pardon this conduct. So this will happen. It will go to trial. Um, the Supreme Court could in, say that you can't have the trial while he's president. But, uh, but those are all issues for the future. I think that the most important thing that we have to look at here is what the prosecutor, Fonnie Willis, is trying to do, is trying to vindicate the interests and the votes of the people in Georgia. As we all know, the federal, the election system in this country is governed by the states. They're the ones who run the elections. And what she's trying to do is vindicate the sanctity of that process. And if you if you think about it, what she's also trying to vindicate is the minority votes in the state of Georgia that Trump and these, and these co-conspirators, according to the charges and indictment, were trying to pretend never happened. We were trying to get rid of without any real legitimate evidence of fraud. And I think that that is a direct assault on our democracy. And I think that's what she's trying to vindicate here. Now, last night when she was announcing these charges, she set a deadline. She said all 19 defendants are ordered to surrender by next Friday, August 25th at noon Eastern. So, Paul, what happens if they don't? If, if they don't surrender, she, what she said is she had arrest warrants for all of them. They will be arrested in due course. Now, um, some of them might not be able to attend for various reasons, and they'll have to call her, and they'll have to get an agreement to surrender at another day. But if they do not make arrangements to surrender, she said there are arrest warrants pending, and they will be arrested. That's the way the criminal system works. What does that mean, though? Does that mean that we will see them be booked? Will they be processed? Will there be mug shots? Will they be handcuffed? Well, um, whether they're arrested or not, there's the process of booking all of these defendants. And what, I, what I've heard that the, uh, the office has said is that all these defendants will be processed, fingerprint, mug shotted, and brought before the court. So that's going to happen regardless of their arrest, when they're arrested. That's part of the process of being charged in a criminal case. And she's assured us that that's going to happen in this case with every defendant. Now, there are four different cases happening simultaneously now. Uh, there are almost 50 charges against the former president. How do you think this all plays out? D does he serve jail time? Well, first of all, whether he serves jail time is sort of up to whether or not he gets convicted. And, you know, with all of these charges, the seriousness of all these charges, the quality of proof that we've seen for the, as as underlying all these charges, it, if I was a betting man, I would say he's going to get convicted. And the charges of which he's going to get convicted of are serious charges. Some of them hold uh, uh, sentences up upwards of 20 years. The Georgia case has a minimum mandatory of five years, which means that unless a judge wants to show particular mercy on him upon conviction, he's going to go to jail for five years. So yes, there's a real potential. That, that he'll go to jail. And I think if we look at what the what the judge in Washington, D.C. has already said in sentencing some of these individuals, this is a very serious case, a very serious crime of which they tried to upset our democracy, the counting of votes for the president. And any judge who treats that seriously is going to want to um, uh, impose a penalty that, that comports with the seriousness of the crime. All right, Paul Peltier, always good to see you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Appreciate it.
Thank you for having me, Victoria. I want to get you now to Texas. A woman there involved in the 2020 murder of a soldier at a military base is receiving a 30-year prison sentence. Prosecutors are saying that Cicely Aguilar helped to mutilate and hide U.S. Army Specialist Vanessa Guillen's body at Fort Cavazos, formerly known as Fort Hood. Now, at the time, Aguilar was dating Aaron Robinson, the Fort Cavazos soldier who murdered Guillen. Robinson took his own life as authorities moved in to arrest him. Investigators say that he killed her after learning she had filed sexual harassment complaints against him. Clarence Avon was a Renaissance man who left his mark in music, sports, entertainment, and politics. The founder of two record labels died on Sunday at the age of 92. National correspondent Stephen Graddock takes a look back at his life and legacy. Clarence. It is my great privilege to induct you into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. When Clarence Avant was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2021, he was celebrated by music icons including Lionel Richie, Quest Love, and Jay-Z, as well as public figures like Oprah Winfrey and former President Barack Obama. I have never seen a crowd like this before in my life. Avant was a legendary manager, record label entrepreneur, and advisor to musicians like Jimmy Smith, Quincy Jones, R&B duo Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, Michael Jackson, and so many more. Dubbed the Black Godfather by the music industry, Avant died Sunday in his home near Los Angeles. He was 92. I have a lot of people, but my job, so far as I'm concerned, is to move us forward. Born in Greensboro, North Carolina, Avon broke into the music industry as a manager in the 1950s, investing in black-owned radio stations in the 1970s, and named the chairman of Motown Records in 1993. Outside of music, he helped athletes like Muhammad Ali and Hank Aaron score lucrative television deals and high-profile commercial sponsorships, a struggle at the time for black celebrities. Musician Bill Withers, a fellow Hall of Famer whose career was guided by Avon, said the businessman put people together and let them do what they do. Clarence is the bridge from a time where there was no opportunity to a time where doors began to open. In the political world, Avon worked behind the scenes advising former President Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, as well as Vice President Kamala Harris. Avant now leaves behind his son, Alex Avant, an actor and producer, and daughter, Nicole Avant, producer, actor, and former U.S. ambassador to the Bahamas. Avant's longtime wife, philanthropist Jacqueline Avant, was murdered in 2021 in their Beverly Hills home. Her death was not only mourned by her husband and family, but by public figures like Magic Johnson, Tyler Perry, and Viola Davis. Daughter Nicole Avant and son-in-law Ted Sarandos, who is also the CEO of Netflix, said in a statement, Clarence leaves behind a loving family and a sea of friends and associates that have changed the world and will continue to change the world for generations to come. The joy of his legacy eases the sorrow of our loss. In Atlanta, Stephen Graddick, Scripps News. Stay with us. We will be right back. This year, Americans will spend $41 billion on auto repairs. That's right, billions with a B. Why is that number so high? Because cars break down. Your vehicle is going to end up in a shop like this too, and if it's no longer under warranty, you're the one who has to pay the bill, and it could cost you thousands of dollars. That is, unless you call CarShield. With a plan through CarShield, administrators will pay for those costly repairs directly to the mechanic of your choice, including dealerships. That means you get protection on major parts and systems like the engine, transmission, electrical systems, and more. Plus, 24-7 emergency services for flat or damaged tires, lockouts, dead batteries, and towing at no additional cost. And there are even rental car options to keep you on the road. I've been a mechanic for 35 plus years now. I've seen thousands of repairs over the years. My happiest customers are the ones that come in do have some kind of auto protection policy that's going to cover the repair that they wasn't expecting anyway. I feel great about recommending CarShield to everybody I see. CarShield has a rich history of dependability, reliability, and success, and has been featured on leading networks like ABC, CNN, Fox News, and more. CarShield is America's most trusted auto protection company. 
My mom told me to call Car Shield, and I saved $5,000. You should always listen to your mom. As soon as my car broke down, Car Shield jumped into action, and I had my car back within days. I've been with Car Shield for close to seven years. I have three vehicles covered, and I saved close to $9,000. I called Car Shield and saved over $5,000. Yes, Car Shield is a good value. Every plan through Car Shield comes with a price lock guarantee, which means no matter how many repairs you need, the price you pay today will never change for as long as you cover your car. Call now and save money with your price lock guarantee. It's not a matter of if your car will break down, but when. Call Car Shield now before it's too late. Call 800 287 5264. 800 287 5264. 800 287 5264. Carvana has hundreds of thousands of five-star reviews and counting. The whole process was really simple and easy, and this is my third time selling to Carvana. You just enter your license plate or your VIN, answer a few questions, boom, you get a real off. Sell your car to Carvana today. There's a better way to begin your mornings. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Rush. Get the stories that will shape each day. Definitely a lot of folks talking about this. So you can get on with yours. Morning Rush, weekday mornings starting at 7, 6 central, only on Scripps News. Montana State Court has sided with a group of young people in a landmark climate ruling. It found the state's promotion of fossil fuels violated the plaintiff's right to a clean and healthful environment. The ruling said a state law provision prevented Montana from considering the impact energy projects may have on the environment. Climate activists predict the ruling will have a major impact on other cases. The state is planning to appeal. Climate change is causing sea levels to rise, and that is threatening farms located in coastal communities. A new study looks at the effect that salt water has on coastal agriculture and its big economic impact. National correspondent Maya Rodriguez shows us how some farmers are already dealing with this issue. When it comes to their livelihoods, farmers deal with unpredictable weather. But Mother Nature is creating a new challenge, one that could affect the soil that they grow in and anything that grows in it. For Paul Cartanza, it's best to be prepared. This is an ex Red Bull truck. Work truck at the ready with anything he may need. No matter where he goes on his farm. I grow corn and soybeans. I grow peas, lima beans, string beans, sweet corn. Cartanza owns Lazy Day Farms, a sprawling farm in coastal Delaware started by his dad and uncle decades ago. This is something that I've done since I was eight, nine years old. You love it. I love it. But lately, one neighbor is overstepping its bounds. Right over these bushes is the bay. And that's created an issue. On high tides, you always get some saltwater intrusion. Uh, it's showing up a little bit more now than it had been. Case in point came after he planted soybeans two months ago. What happened over here? Uh, the salt water came in and and it hurt the soybeans, which allowed them to die. Saltwater intrusion, which crops like soybeans and corn are vulnerable to, is a challenge not just here, but in coastal agricultural areas elsewhere too, according to a new study published in the journal Nature Sustainability. It's really devastating. A lot of farmlands along our coastal landscapes. Lead researcher Pinky Mondal is an assistant professor at the University of Delaware, who along with researchers from the University of Maryland and George Washington University focused on the Delmarva Peninsula, an area comprised of the states of Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia. It's a coastal region with a big agricultural footprint and one whose low elevation makes it particularly susceptible to rising seas. We utilized satellite data, but we also utilized aerial images by, captured by USDA. And that's how we could tell where these farms uh, have salt patches. Those salt patches are visible in these photos the researchers shared. 
which shows sandy areas on farms where saltwater intrusion affected the soil, killing off what was growing there. This is particularly important because saltwater intrusion is changing landscapes along a lot of places, not just Delmarva. Uh, we have heard of this issue happening in New Jersey, in the Carolinas, and even other countries. In their study, researchers looked at 94,000 location points across 14 coastal counties and found the potential agriculture losses from saltwater intrusion just in the areas they studied could be upwards of $107 million per year. The time for action is now. We are already behind because if we are seeing a salt patch on a farm, it's already too late. We have already lost that patch of land. Back at Lazy Day Farms, this is the most sensitive that I've had. Paul Cartanza says he's taking steps to protect his land and circling it with berms and floodgates. The ground can be saved if you can be able to build structures to keep the water out. He says adapting to what is happening is the only way to survive. I believe this farm should be in my family for a long time, I'm hoping. That's what my dad wanted. So I'm hoping to hold on to it. In the hopes generations to come will still farm here. Maya Rodriguez, Scripps News, Dover, Delaware. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, we're going to introduce you to a young woman who has the drive that puts her ahead above the rest. We'll be right back. Attention all seniors. You can now get up to $50,000 for your funeral and other final expenses, including your credit card debt with no medical exam, starting at less than a dollar a day. Oh, honey, you're dead and I can't stop talking about this baby that's coming. We've also been thinking a lot about our future and no matter what, we want to make sure we aren't leaving you and your family with any of our debts. Just last week, we read that the price of a funeral can be $8,000 or more. Wow, Jeff and I definitely would not have the money to pay for that. And that's just a funeral. But you don't have to worry. We called them with one phone call, we were eligible for $50,000 for our funeral and final expenses. Well, that's great, but don't you need to take a medical exam to qualify? You and mom have some health issues. No, there's no medical exam and we were able to get coverage right over the phone. And our rates can never be increased, our benefits can never be decreased, and our coverage can never be canceled. I'm so glad you made that call. Don't leave loved ones with your debt. Call 800-293-5789 now and see if you qualify for up to $50,000 for your funeral and other final expenses starting at less than a dollar a day. There's no medical exam and you can be approved even if you have pre-existing health conditions. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. There's no obligation. Call 800-293-5789 now. There's no paperwork. No no hidden fees and no waiting periods and you can start coverage right over the phone starting at less than a dollar a day call 800-293-5789 that's 800-293-5789 800-293-5789 how does Klein inspector get among the most big verdicts and settlements of any law firm in the country because Klein Inspector is an award-winning team with five doctor lawyers, the most of any firm in the United States. And that's why the New York Times calls Klein Inspector a powerhouse law firm. So if a defective product, motor vehicle accident, or medical malpractice caused a catastrophic injury, call Klein Inspector. We need some help. I know. I'm going to CashNetUSA.com. And if approved, we can have the money in our account as soon as the same business day. Go to CashNetUSA.com to apply for the money you need. Scripps News and our partners at Bellingcat track the hidden network of Russian cargo ships smuggling precious resources from occupied lands. Russia's Ghost Fleet, Sunday night at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. Data from the Alliance for Entrepreneurial Equity shows only 2% of U.S. businesses are black-owned. But that statistic isn't stopping a young woman from fulfilling her dreams. Scripps News national correspondent Matt Pearl has her story. 
under a backdrop of oppression, seemingly every act requires resistance. It fills the sculptures on a historically black college campus. It drives protests and policy. And it exists in a beauty salon on a Tuesday morning. No customers yet, just a young woman styling a mannequin, thriving on resistance and persistence. It's not as important as when you do it for an actual person. Right, but I treat it like it is. Like I treat it like I'm doing a client. No slack. Casey Harris handles mannequins on her days off. Her days on often feature a full lineup of clients a towel dry. under her own branded business. Impressive for anyone, but especially a first year student in college. It makes me very proud of myself. I definitely don't think that I would be where I am today if I didn't have the community that I have. The backdrop for Casey is a country where 14% of Americans are black but just 2% of businesses are black owned, where black entrepreneurs face deficits in the wealth and home equity that drives most white owned new businesses. And here's the Kool-Aid with Kool the red. That's the red Kool-Aid. Casey's story isn't just of a girl who got her start in styling by using Kool-Aid as hair dye. <laughs> it's also of a girl whose dreams have been nurtured by family and community. She was fearless. Her parents, Darren and Sonia, recall giving Casey their blessing oh. and a home office. It was Casey's internal will that made those people want to come around her. In recent years, a salon near home has given her a stall and an apprenticeship. Most of the time it's about, I need money. Benita Swindell is the president of a Central Maryland chapter of the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. They held a contest to help fund young black entrepreneurs. Yep. They heard from Casey and awarded her $500. We used to talk about starting a business, but starting a business was like, oh my God, that's just too much. It's a lot of money. Um, but nowadays, people are starting a business and they're starting on it with a dime. And when Casey isn't building her business, she's studying at Bowie State University, the HBCU with those sculptures, the HBCU with a new facility and program specifically for entrepreneurs. It allows our community to focus on the kinds of things that are important to our community, not as a response to somebody else's vision of the world. So here is a young woman in a world with barriers, using space at a black owned salon, receiving funds from a black sorority, finding foundation at a black school. This is cute. Seeing her childhood dreams become communal. The whole purpose of community is to expand that, pour into others, that's, that's what we all should be doing. On this day, Casey Harris styles a mannequin. Down the road, she might open a salon. She might hire employees. Or she might choose to be a boss to only herself. But the choice will be hers. And it will be the product of her persistence and generations of resistance. It makes me feel very empowered, like I'm doing the right thing, and I want to keep striving to make people proud. In Bowie, Maryland, I'm Matt Pearl. Good for her. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Thank you so much for joining us today. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. And don't forget, you can always check us out online at scriptsnews.com. Now, if you are staying with us, we have much more news headed your way right here 